Hey there, it's Marianne from Thrive and welcome to my channel. If you're not going to be at your desk for any reason, one of the most important things you can do is set up an out of office message. Now this is for holidays, for sick leave, some well-earned downtime, or even if it's an unplanned absence, you or someone in your team should absolutely get in and get one set up. It sets some expectations. It lets people know that you're not available when they could realistically expect a response from you and who they should contact if they need to speak to someone before then. Really important. I'm going to be doing this today on my PC using the desktop version of Classic Outlook. I'm going to walk you through this step by step, creating it, getting it set up and share some tips to make sure that you can keep it both fun and professional so that your personality can still shine through. Let's get started. First, let's get into the settings. So here on our PC, we're gonna, we've are gonna we got our classic version of Outlook open, and this is a magic day for this email account. There are no emails in the inbox. We're at inbox zero, which is very exciting. So we're gonna head up to file here in the top menu, and then we are heading to this one here. We're looking for automatic replies out of office. Once we're here, the pop-up that comes up is going to walk us through the process. So at the moment, it's got do not send replies. Obviously, we're going to select send replies. We can then choose to schedule a message. Now, this means that we can set the date and time that this out of office starts and ends. So it's perfect if you have a fixed period of leave, something like your end of year closure, uh, annual leave, a planned absence for a conference or an event or a meeting, you can set that time frame. If, however, it is an unplanned absence, you would just switch this to send replies and then you would switch it back off when you are back at the desk. Then what we've got is we've got two tabs. So we've got an inside my organisation and an outside. Inside is for people who have the same domain name as you. So that will be for anyone inside your organization. So for me, it would be anyone with a thriveadmin.com email account. It would be very, I would suggest being very careful about how you do this because you wanna make sure that it still is professional because it could be anybody in the organization. It could be the CEO, it could be board members. So just take that into account when you're thinking about potentially having different email messages here. You can choose your font, you can format it in a few different ways, but basically what you want to do here is tell them, thanks for your email, it's in my inbox, but I'm not checking it, this is the date, this is the date that I stopped being available, this is the date that I will be back, if you know that, and in the meantime, here's what's happening with these emails. You can send it on to somebody else if that's if it's urgent, otherwise I'll get back to it on my return. A standard sort of a simple standard response is something like what you can see here that says, uh, I'm away from the desk from this date to this date. This inbox is not monitored during this time and will be responded to as a priority. If you had someone you could delegate to in this period, this is where you would add something like, in my absence, if the matter is urgent, please contact whoever at, via this email address or on this extension number or whatever it might be. Now, Internally, you could potentially do that with an extension number. Outside your organisation, you can choose to let people know or not. So if you untick this one here, it won't send it to anyone external. So that's anyone who has a different domain. So that'll be all your Gmail accounts, all your Hotmail accounts, all of your suppliers and customers and clients and leads, anything that comes into your inbox. This is the one that you would potentially keep a little bit more formal. So you might choose something like, thank you very much for your email. I am out of the office from this date to this date. For urgent matters, please contact, contact person at this email address. Or you might choose to say something like, uh, you know, this email address is not being monitored while I attend X event, something like that. Um, I will return to it on my, you know, I'll attend to it on my return or you can contact someone. In the meantime, some of your external messages are a great place. If it's going to someone outside your organisation, it might be a way for you to let them know about another way that they could potentially self-resolve whatever the, the query is. So if you have a program, a course, uh, an IT ticket system, an inquiry system, something that 
they could potentially access that would be helpful, you could pop this in here. If you're having a sale or a promotion or there's something else going on that they should know about within your organization, you can put it in here as well. Just be aware that this comes out as a very simple email. It goes back to them. It won't have your email signature or anything like that on it, but you can include uh, text. You won't be able to put pictures or GIFs or other sort of things in it. You can do hyperlinks, but that would be about it. So just be aware of that when you are thinking about how you want to build these out. Um, what we can do as well is we can add some rules now, rules are if you want to make specific exceptions or do specific actions based on things coming from certain people or with certain um, certain email addresses, certain subject lines, the same as you would with other rules in Outlook. And we have a video on the, how the rules work generally. This is sort of a modified version of that. You can make it a highlight, you can alert it, you can delete it, you could move it, you can copy it, or you can forward it. So you might have just basically that it's anything that's been sent to your email address would be forwarded to the person that is your delegate so that they're aware of it. Um, just be aware that will be everything that lands in your inbox, okay? So it's worth thinking about. So those are the things you need to know. The next thing you do is once you've hit okay and you've set it up, you need to test it. You need to send an email from your account to you or from your personal email to you and just make sure that it comes through and it's clear and all okay. So once you've, you've got it all set up, if you've set it with that schedule option, it will automatically stop sending the out of office after that time frame for your end date. If it hasn't, you'll need to go back in and just switch from send to do not send. Now that you've set up your out of office, there are a couple of final things you need to make sure that it's going to work properly for you. These are my final quick tips. So number one, be really clear and concise, particularly if you have a return date that is scheduled, make sure that is really obvious. People need to know that so that they are not expecting a response any earlier. If they are um, going, if you're going to offer an alternative contact, make sure that's really clear as well and how they can contact them. Think about customizing it for your audience, tip number two. So if you work in a team, you may need to direct different groups of people to different contacts. Now you can do that in one of two ways. You can list the different types of inquiries and give the details all in that out of office, or you can set up those rules that if it's from this particular person or if it mentions this in the subject, they would get a slightly different response and you can set that up as a, with an email and you can actually write them a specific email or you could forward that to a particular person. The other thing is, and this is the final tip, we used to really focus on keeping it very, very strictly professional and that may still be the case for you depending on the organisation you work in. You may need to keep quite a formal tone. However, that is not always the case now. You can let a little bit of personality in. I love using HubSpot's out of office generator. It's fantastic. I'll tweak it slightly each year, but my end of year message is usually based on one of their, their templates. I'll pop the link to that and another uh, blog post that I've often referred to for some inspiration in the notes in the description on this video. Now, some other things to think about are if it is general leave, uh, just stick to the basics when you left, when you'll be back and who to contact in your absence. You don't want to get bogged down in, in too much else. You want to keep it really simple so that the person at the other end knows what's going on and isn't going to panic. And if you're managing a really big project, you may want to direct inquiries to a specific team lead who can then manage it and deal with it so that the person sending the message is dealing with some or going to have a contact point that is across everything. You also need to make sure that that person knows that you are listing them in your out of office, okay? So please run that past to them before you set it up. My absolute last tip for you is that you should check with your IT or HR departments if you have them as to whether they have any guidelines or examples of out of office messages that they consider suitable and would recommend you using. You don't have to follow them verbatim, 
but it would give you a guideline of what is within the company kind of brand and voice. And you can work with that as a starting point rather than working from a blank screen. So that is working with out of office messages, really handy tool, really useful to help keep that communication and your professionalism. So you don't come back after a period of leave to a whole heap of emails that started very nice and got quite shouty because people had no idea you weren't, weren't there to see them. So avoid the confusion and the overwhelm, set yourself up for success and make sure that people have some clear expectations about when you are going to get back to their messages. Thank you very much. If you found this video really useful, be sure to like it, share it with someone that you think would find it useful and subscribe so that you get all of the latest Microsoft 365 tips from me here at Thrive. Cheers.